With this video, I want to show you the power of color range masks inside of Lightroom once more. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw files for this image down below in the description of the video. And now let's begin. Since we're working with a panoramic image, we first need to merge that. And if you don't know how that's done, this is super simple. Just select all the images down in the film strip for the panorama. Right click on one of them, go to photo merge and choose panorama. Here I like to use the second projection method, which has the best result for this particular image. And without changing anything else, just hit merge. We will end up with an image like this. You can see I already have applied some quite heavy cropping because the bottom and the right side isn't really that useful for us for this image. So I have taken them out. With the merging of the panorama out of the way, we can start with the basic adjustments. So let's expand the basic panel and I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This lessens the contrast. As you can see, this makes the darkest areas of the image just a little bit brighter. And in turn, we do have a little more control over the contrast ourselves. Then what I want to do as well is to adjust the white balance because looking at this image, you can see a quite heavy green color cast. And to fix green color casts, we can use the tint slider. And obviously I don't want to introduce more tint. So I'm going in the other direction, introducing more magenta to the image. And as I push the tint slider, you can see how we are reducing the color cast in the image. I'm also going to play around with the temperature a bit. I think this shot could use some more warmth. So let's increase the temperature. All right, this is looking much better already. Now we can work on the exposure. Looking at Instagram, this shot looks decent, but we can tweak it some more. I want to start by bringing down the highlights almost all the way. And what this does is it will reveal more detail in the sky with the clouds and in the river, especially in the white water areas. And this just makes these two areas look more detailed and structured. Obviously, this will make the whole image look darker as well. So I'm going to counter that by bringing up the whites. And as I bring up the whites, I'm always paying close attention to the histogram because we don't want to overexpose too badly. But as we have applied these two adjustments, you can see we do have a lot more detail while also pushing the contrast, giving the whole image more punch. So that's looking really, really nice. We can further work on the contrast by bringing down the shadows. Again, at the histogram, you can see there is just a little bit of underexposure going on, indicated by the clipping icon right here. We can try to fix that by raising the black slider. So I think right around here looks quite good. I don't want to raise it too much because this again will reduce the overall contrast. But at this point, I'm quite happy with how this is looking. Then we can add a little bit of texture to sharpen the image and some clarity for some midtones contrast. And of course, we want this image to be well saturated. So I'm going to bring up the vibrance a bit. All right, that's the image after the basic adjustments. We can compare it to before real quick. And thanks to the adjusted white balance, everything looks much, much better. And of course, the contrast also is much better at this point. I did forget to collapse the film strip once more. I'm sorry for that. Let's bring it down. Now for the masking. And for this image, we can solely rely on color range masks since we have a few areas, each with unique color tones to them. So let's open up the masking panel and let me create a color range mask and start with the grass on the left side. I'm trying to target the highlights in the green areas. So right here. You can see this will give us a very precise selection for all the highlights in the grass. And what we can do with that selection is we can kind of dodge the image and thus add further contrast to it. If you want, we can use the refine slider, bring it up a little more, just so have some more areas selected. Now with that out of the way, let's adjust this area. What I want to do is to bring up the exposure to make these areas brighter. Just a little bit, we don't have to overdo it. We want to keep it subtle. But as I deactivate the mask, you can see the difference and it does make a big difference. Next up, 
I want to work on the water in the foreground. I want to make it more colorful and luckily for us, the water has its own unique color. So let's create another color range mask and I'm clicking right in the main area which I want to change, which is the right portion of this river. So I'm going to click right in here. And again, you can see we are creating a very precise mask for the river, but also we are selecting parts of the upper area of the image. So we want to say subtract, choose a linear gradient and just take out that part. We could also say subtract and let's choose brush to just clean up the selection right here because we really don't want to affect those rocks. So maybe something like this. Now what I want to do to improve the colors of the river is to bring down the temperature first. Just a little bit again. We don't want to overdo it. But what we can do to bring out color is to bring up the saturation a bit. So this is looking lovely. We can also add more structure to the water using this mask. And we can do that by simply bringing up texture. And we can also raise the clarity slightly. All right, let's see if we can also raise the shadows. This does make a slight difference. I think I'm going to raise it just a little bit like this. And again, let me deactivate this particular mask to see the difference from before with a rather desaturated river to after with some nice colors introduced. One thing I really, really love to do with a color range mask is to target the blues of the sky to make them more intense. So let's create another color range mask and I'm clicking right here in the blue part. Now this again will target more than needed. So we want to make use of that refine slider once more and bring it down. And you can see we, are, we can very nicely target only the blues of the sky. Now there are still a few areas of these mountains selected, but we can easily get rid of them by clicking on those three dots, choosing intersect mask with, and here we are choosing select sky. So only the areas in the sky are affected. Perfect. And what I'm going to do to make the blue more intense is to bring down the exposure very gently, adding some more contrast between clouds and the blue part of the sky. We can also bring up the contrast itself, but this is looking really, really good. Then we can also change the mountain in the distance in the center. Let me create another color range mask and I'm clicking right in here. Again, there is more selected than needed, but we can simply modify the mask. So what I'm going to do is to click on those three dots again, choose intersect mask width and choose radial gradient. So I only want to target the mountain. That's why I'm drawing the radial gradient just around this mountain in the center. This is looking like a really good selection. What I want to do here is to bring up the exposure, making the mountain just a little bit brighter. I'm also going to add contrast because increasing the exposure will reduce the contrast in this area. So this is looking good right here. I'm also increasing the whites. And to give the mountain more punch, I'm going to add a lot of clarity. Okay, we could even add some dehaze, making this mountain look a little clearer like this. But other than that, I'm quite happy with this mask. I do think we can target those green parts of the image one more time. So I'm going to use another color range mask and let me click somewhere in the green area once more. You can see this time there is a little more selected. I'm just going to modify this mask using the subtract tool. I'm using a linear gradient to subtract the foreground. And I'm going to use another linear gradient to target the top part because I only want these brighter areas to be affected again. And with this mask, I'm going to once more slightly bring up the exposure. And I'm going to slightly raise the temperature to introduce some more warmth to the highlights. All right, we could also add some more punch to the sky by increasing the brightness of the clouds. So I'm using another color range mask and click right here in the clouds. Again, we want to make use of that intersect tool. So I'm intersecting mask with and choose select sky because we only want to target the clouds in the sky. Actually, let me modify the color range mask, bringing down the refine slider so we only target the clouds. 
something like this looks much better. And here I'm going to simply raise the whites a tiny, tiny bit. All right, wonderful. And that's it for the masking. And as you can see, I only used color range masks to target certain areas of this image. Color range masks are a great tool for dodging and burning if the image has very distinct areas with different color tones. So let me deactivate the masks to see the difference from before to after. Much better. Now we can do a little bit of color grading and I'm going to start in the color mixer with the luminance this time. Because with the luminance we can further target those green and blue tones of the image, I am going to raise the yellow luminance a little bit. I'm also going to raise the green luminance. Both of these sliders will make the green highlights in the grass just a little bit brighter and thus we're adding further contrast. I'm also going to slightly increase the aqua luminance which will affect the water in the river and then let's head over into the saturation tab. I'm going to bring up the orange saturation as well as yellow and let's bring up aqua again for the river in the foreground and we could even raise the blue tones very slightly. This looks great. Then one final bit of color grading in the calibration tab. Here I just want to bring up the saturation of these three colors, giving the image some more punch. Wonderful. Then we can do some sharpening in the details tab. Let's bring down the radius. Let's increase the details. And let's add some masking while holding down the Alt key. I hope my computer won't crash because I have issues with the RAM installed and it's super super laggy at the moment. So let's finish this image real quick. I'm also going to increase the amount of sharpening. And there we have the image after the editing in Lightroom. Now obviously due to the merge panorama there are some gaps at the top. I am going to fill them in Photoshop but since I have significant computer problems I'm not going to show this in this video. That's a minor part of the editing anyway. So I hope this little editing tutorial about color range masks was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions or if you want to add anything, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.